Last thing he said to me was, I'll see you later, Mama. And I never saw him again. Imagine one of your loved ones mysteriously disappeared while in the hands of law enforcement. That's what happened to Terrence Williams and Felipe Santos. Two different men, two different cases, but Terrence Williams and Felipe Santos have one thing in common. They both disappeared after having an encounter with the same officer. And here's what we know. Terrence has been missing since 2004. He was last seen on January 11th by his friend Jason, who Terrence invited out that night, but Jason couldn't go, so Terrence went out without him. The next day on January 12th, Jason wakes up to a number of missed calls from Terrence. Two days went by and Jason spoke with Terrence's mother, Marcia, who reported her son missing, but the county shrugged her off. They tell me he's an adult. He's free to do what he wants to do. But a mother knows it just wasn't right. Eventually, the family ended up calling a tow company and found out his car was picked up from a cemetery. Marcia went to the cemetery where workers told her that a cop named Stephen Calkins put Terrence in the back of his cruiser and drove away. I knew something had happened to Terrence. I knew something had happened. I spoke with a detective, because I want to know what happened to my son. They were telling me, oh, not Steve Calkins. No, he wouldn't do that. Deputy Stephen Calkins was a 16-year veteran at the time, and his personal file contained positive evaluations. Dispatchers spoke with him four days after Terrence went missing, and this is what was said. You can sit up at 12.27. A large white Cadillac. A white Cadillac. I gotta look it up in my notes. I don't remember. Are you sure there was no one with it? No. The dispatcher took his word for it, but Terrence's mother, Marcia, kept pressing for answers. And a month later, Deputy Calkins is finally asked to write an incident report. Except now, his story has completely changed. Whereas he initially couldn't remember, he now gave a detailed account. This time, Deputy Calkins tells officials that Terrence had asked him for a ride to a nearby gas station called Circle K after experiencing car troubles. He also offered up a number of other really specific details that have left many to still question him. Two months after her son's disappearance, Marcia writes a letter to the editor of a local newspaper, and this is where the story takes a turn. I receive a phone call from the Mexican consulate, and I'm going, oh my God, they found my baby, they found my baby. But they hadn't. They were calling me to let me know that there was a young man, Felipe Santos, missing. And just like Terrence, Felipe was last seen in the back seat of Deputy Calkins' car. Felipe disappeared three months before Terrence and was in the country illegally in hopes of a better life. That's why in October 2003, when he and his brother got into a minor car crash, they offered to pay for the damage but didn't want to get the police involved. But the woman had already called 911 and the officer that responded and arrested Santos was Calkins. Later, Felipe's brothers went to the county jail to get him, but there was no record of their brother ever being there. Deputy Calkins later revealed that he had arrested Felipe for driving without a license, but instead of taking him to jail, he drove him a few blocks away to the Circle K, the same chain of convenience stores where Calkins claimed he dropped off Terrence Williams three months later. <laughs> 